All right, welcome to Soapbox Sacramento. Tonight my guest is going to be uh, a comedian, Keith Lowell Jensen. I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but first I want to tell you about the sponsors. We've got uh, Pieces Pizza on Capitol and uh, 21st, I believe it is. Uh, they uh, give us some pizza to, to share with the crew here, and it's always very delicious, and I highly recommend that. Also, we are sponsored by Humor Times, which is a political humor monthly available uh, all over the world by subscription. And you can find out more at humortimes.com. So managing to elicit big, big laughs without yelling or being over the top, Keith Lowell Jensen has become known for his subtle, smart approach, his political humor, and an endearing style of storytelling. Keith's comedy special, Atheist Christmas, is currently playing on Hulu. He can also be seen on the current season of the History Channel's How the States Got Their Shapes, in the Coexist Comedy Tour on Stars Network, and as a panhandling expert on Spike TV's Mansers. We'll have to ask him about that. He is a frequent and popular guest on podcasts, and he has the unique privilege of being a frequent guest lecturer on the topic of stand-up comedy at UC Davis. His label is Stand Up Records. Keith Lowell Jensen has four comedy specials out, To the Moon, Cats Made of Rabbits, Elf Orgy, and Atheist Christmas. He tapes his fifth, he has been taping his fifth special, Bad Comedy for, or is that right? Yeah, Bad Comedy for Bad People. And that's going to be coming out later this year. Welcome, Keith. Ah, thanks for having me. I got to remember to write a shorter one of those. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but you've I done so much. I let someone get carried away there. <laughs> <laughs> you've done so much. You know, it takes a while to list it all. That's all. So uh, that that piqued my interest there. The um, what was it? Mansers. Mansers and <laughs> panhandling expert. We have a few panhandlers around town. So. Well, I made a documentary called Why Lie I Need a Drink. And they got a hold of me through that. They were doing a thing on panhandling. Okay. And Mansers works like a lot of television, uh -huh. uh, which is to say completely dishonest. <laughs> right. So they had the answers they wanted me to give. Okay. And they said, can you make a lot of money at panhandling? And uh -huh. I said, no, not really. I, people have. Certain uh -huh. people can. Right. It's hard. I didn't succeed at it. You know. So you actually right. tried it as a, yeah. a research for, for this? Right. Okay. Uh, not scientific in any uh -huh. sense, but right. just to make experience personal. Did while, you, did while you try to get to look real grubby for the party? I did or? everything. Sometimes uh -huh. I went out trying to look like an actual panhandler in my old army jacket. And stuff. Uh -huh. Other times I went out in silly costumes. <laughs> I was a mime with nothing written on my sign. Oh, okay. <laughs> a mummy with uh, my, my wife actually made sure the hieroglyphics were accurate uh -huh. with hieroglyphics on the sign. Um, <laughs> You know, they say, can you make money at this? And I said, no, not really. And then they said, well, what's the most you ever made? And I said, well, one time, it was Christmas Eve, mm. I made $40 in an hour. Mm. And then you see it on TV, and they go, can you make a living at this? And they just cut to me going, I made $40 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not what I said. Right. So, right. Interesting experience. Selective editing there. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then they sent me out to Panhandle with their cameras following me. And I shook down a school bus full of kids, and they were throwing lunch money at me through the oh. window. It was fine. <laughs> it was ridiculous. All right. Good, good. Well, um, now, how long have you been doing uh, stand-up? Uh, 13, 14 years. And you, you're Somewhere based here there. in Sacramento. Where you, yeah. How long have you lived here? Uh, I have lived here since I was 18. I've lived in Sacramento proper, and since I was 14, I've lived in the area. Okay. So, and I'm really old now. Yeah, so I don't want to give another number that yeah, you yeah, I was going to try to marry you down there. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've been around a couple decades. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Known you for most of them, I think. So I've, 13 years, that's not that long at, at uh, something like stand-up comedy. It feels Seems like, like a you've really come a long, long way time. since then. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw the uh, pictures of you hanging out with uh, Robin Williams. That's, that's not yeah. bad. And were you sharing a stage with them? Yeah, Something there's like uh, a really cool theater in Mill Valley called the Throckmorton Theater. And they do a Tuesday night show, mm -hmm. and you'll end up performing with Mort Saul, Robin Williams used to swing in, Dana Carvey lives right in the neighborhood. Nice. So every time you go, you're like, oh, who am I going to perform with tonight? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's wild. And yeah. So we got to perform with Robin several times, 
But then he would also just come by the green room to hang out, oh, which was nice. such a treat, you know, wow, and you're in there yeah. trading stories with Robin Williams. Yeah. And he, he, he seemed like he had some reverence for Mort Saul. Uh-huh. Other than that, it didn't matter if you were an open micer hanging mm-hmm. out in the green room with your buddy mm-hmm. and you're not even on the show, yeah. or if you're someone who's fairly well established who has some TV credits, we're all just comics to him, and, and he's right. just a comic, and right. he's in there shoot, you know, shooting nice. the breeze. And they say never meet your heroes. Yeah, and that that warning was needless. He was uh-huh. uh, one of the coolest people I ever met in my life. Excellent. Do you remember any of the, his little stories about? Oh, he any, had his any special uh, something that pops up. Yeah, he he told us his story once, and he said he he didn't think he could ever tell it on stage because he worries about where the where the sympathies lie. Mm. But he has a friend whose son is developmentally disabled. Okay, uh, an adult, and lives at home, and and he comes home one day. And he goes to open the closet to put his coat away, and there's a man in the closet. And apparently a salesman had come to the door, and his oh. son, who was big and scared the salesman, <laughs> put him in the closet to wait for, for his dad to get home. <laughs> and the guy's like, can I leave now? <laughs> oh, yes, you man. can leave. And he had to tell his son, don't, don't put people in the closet. <laughs> That's funny. Well, so Soapbox is generally a political show. So I want to, I want to, uh, I know you do all kinds of comedy, but I want to. I'm a political comic. Yeah, well, I want to focus <laughs> yeah. on that aspect because yeah, I know you do that. Um, you do routines on uh, religion and gender politics, mm-hmm. for example. Um, what, what uh, are there other areas of politics you like to venture into? Yeah, it's weird. Um, I'm extremely political on social media. And a lot of times people expect me to be more political on stage, and mm-hmm. I, I really only express my politics on stage when I can fit them into the personal. Right. On my new special, there's a bit about locking up the homeless, which is a thing we're doing now, mm-hmm. again. Yes, um, But I tie it into watching Charlie Chaplin with my daughter, mm. and her discovering the whole concept of homelessness in jail for the first time, uh-huh. and having to explain them to her, right. um, and, and kind of giving that child's perspective on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if, if I can find a way to talk about it there, where it's personal, I can make it funny on stage and still kind of keep my my character and keep the the vibe that I'm trying to create up there. Well, speaking, I of, can be a lot uh, angrier online, and that's why I love yeah. memes. Because yeah. like I, on a meme, I, I don't have to worry about right. setting myself up for the story about being a dad that I'm going to tell next, or right. you know, the, yeah. the story about being a kid. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm just a pissed off guy like the rest of you in here. Well, I, I follow you on Facebook and I see uh, there's a lot of funny stuff you put up there. Well, thank you. Um, but speaking of kids and politics, there's this one clip I, I came across where, uh, where you were, um, it's religion in school. And uh, if they can find the clip, they can put it up. Uh, uh, but it's uh, animated, someone did an animated thing over what sounds like you doing a live routine. He was a college student, and that was just his project. He, uh-huh. he wrote me and said, mind if I do this? And I said, of course not. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. It was I very well it. done. Yeah. Um, can you guys find it back there? It's, uh, I think it was called uh, Keith, Religion in School. It's the title of the... Look in the desk four. drawer behind the rubber bands. <laughs> That's what I, think, I think I saw it there. Uh, but it was very inventive. I liked, uh, liked how they did that. Um, it's not coming up right now, so we will move on. I hope they got a good grade. <laughs> yes, I hope so. They, they definitely deserved it. Um, let's see. Now, you're, you're an atheist. A, a, um, that I am. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. A professed atheist. Yes. Uh, not, not hiding it. Um, out. And uh, yeah, out of out of, and a lot of you do a lot of uh, bits on that. Um, in fact, you were on a tour. It was that just a one, one-time tour. Is the uh, what was it called? Um, no, we toured for a couple of years. The coexist comedy coexist tour. Coexist comedy tour. Yeah. And then I, the way my brain tends to work is once something is is captured on film, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, well now it's permanent. There's a record of it. I can move on. Right. And so. Even though I didn't intend it to be so, they, they made a documentary about us. A guy named Larry Brand made a documentary about the Coaxes Comedy Tour. And then that kind of took the wind out of the sails for me, where I was like, well, now it's documented. And right. I kind of <clears throat> got interested in other things. But um, Did you fear that people wouldn't come out for it as much if they'd already no, seen it? No, that wasn't them? it at all. It was just me feeling like, well, now I want to do something else that yeah. I can document. <laughs> okay, okay, right, right. So, um, but yeah, it was, so it was a, a Hindu 
a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Jew, and an atheist, myself. Right. And it was me and the Hindu, Tapan Trivedi, started it. And we found a, a female Muslim stand-up comedian. Nice. Which, those are more common than you would think. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, but yeah, so we would all travel together. And, and like I was saying earlier, where I don't, I don't want to be the angry guy on stage. I feel like that's been done. And, and done by some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I like it, but it's not me. And this was a way to actually be very critical of religion and of organized religion, but at the same time showing, look, I'm here with some of my best friends. Right. People see Who us playing religious. with each other and teasing right. each other, and it's like, we can be critical, we can have these conversations. It doesn't mean that we're not friends. It's yeah. not that it's not a friendly thing. Yeah. So and I that really just loved it. Seems like the perfect way to say, hey, we can all get along. Mm -hmm. You know, here's these By comedians. sabotaging each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and not be offended and not be you know super sensitive about things right. and uh, I mean that to me is just like a way to bring peace in the world you know if you yeah. could if you could bottle that which you kind of did I guess you made a DVD out of it yeah but uh, you know if everyone could see that and you know just see how 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 silly you know to me that would just bring out how silly it is to get upset about right. different religions and their different beliefs. Yeah. And even um, now, with, with all the talk about Muslims and, and the fear of Muslims, within the atheist community, the, the response that unfortunately you get a lot of times is, well, the problems with Islam are real, therefore Islamophobia is justified and it's not real. And I'm like, no, phobia means an irrational fear. Right. You can have an irrational fear of something that really is a threat. You can have an irrational fear of heights. Right. It doesn't mean you won't die from heights, but right. you can over-respond to it. You have an irrational fear of it. And with coexist, it's like, well, you can't deny that there are moderate Muslims, that there are Muslims who are just as American as you or I, because here's one. Right. <laughs> um, Hassan Minhaj, who is now on The Daily Show, toured with coexist at a couple of stops. Oh, yeah. yeah. And here's a kid who, in the basketball and hip hop, went to UC Davis got great grades, and in many senses is more the like clean cut American kid than I'll ever be. But he's the one getting stopped at the airport, mm -hmm. and he's the one, you know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. really? Him? I mean, I'm a threat. I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> and when you think about what it is, it's something like uh, a huge percentage of the world's population is, is Muslim. Right. And, you know, obviously it's a very small percentage that's radical, you know, terrorist types. And then there are uh, those type of people of all religions. There's... Uh, you know, so-called Christian terrorists, right. KKK. More, um, more deaths attributed to them in this country than to Muslims. There you go. <laughs> so, so to to ban a whole, you know, to label a whole religion, um, you know, like that, or to suspect everyone who is like that, is just ridiculous. And what I was starting to to. I lost my train of thought. That's ADHD in there. I, uh -huh. <laughs> I rehearsed before I got on stage. What, what I was starting to say is uh, when people talk that way about Muslims, you can bet they don't know any. The right. greatest exactly. thing in the world is just for them to meet someone who's Muslim and spend some time with them. Right. And I feel like we kind of gave people a little bit of that. To say, well, now you've exactly. laughed at a Muslim. You've heard yeah. about her life experience. Right. You've heard her stories. Her father was a dentist. Her, you know, right. And... and so yeah, I that, think you you've walk done a away service from that, that way. changed. Yeah, you know, you've done a service that way because you, know, you know, there's probably a lot of people who, are, you know, where they live or whatever, they may never run into right um, that person, and and you've you've presented it to them that way, and, or and they may anyone not, can see that DVD, and they may not know that they've run into that person because right. they're yeah, not wearing a hijab yeah. or yeah. a yeah. Uh, hippie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do we have any of those clips ready back there? I'd like to show. Uh, a clip if we've got it we could do uh, either the religion in school one the animated one or do we no well okay then I could we act won't. it out we'll just <laughs> yeah maybe you should <laughs> oh here we go we got one if you want to fight the whole religion in school thing beat them by joining them Dick Danley said, yes, I want religion fully represented in school. Pledge of Allegiance, One Nation Under God, Allah, Vishnu, Krishna, Mazda, Hanuman, <laughs> Thor, Odin, Cthulhu, Bob, 
flying spaghetti monster. A short clip, but um, put together by, do you remember his name? I don't. Okay. It was someone I'd never College met student. before. That's what's fun about having just a, a certain level of, of like internet fame. Right. Is you get things like that where you're collaborating with people you've never met before. I was telling you earlier, I, I have a joke uh, that I wrote the title to a country song. Mm -hmm. No song, just the title. Her safe word was goodbye. And then I always say, if you know, uh, a couple of chords on the guitar and some words that rhyme with goodbye, hit me up after the show. Yeah. Somebody sent me. I have it up on my website. They actually went ahead and wrote the song for me, and it's great. It's really good. So I was like, "Thank you, stranger who saw me at a show and is now my friend." Speaking of your website, is that the uh, the blog website, or do you have um, another one? Yeah, it's rockass.net or keitholjensen.blogspot.com. They okay, both go to, they the, both same go to the same place. Okay. Yeah, I rock. Rockass.net. Rockass You're allowed to say ass because it means donkey. Okay, there you go. That's so you can get away with saying okay. it on the radio. So go there and check out that song. I'm, I know I want to. I want to. I want to hear that song. That sounds good. Um, let's see. Well, I know you you make fun of politicians sometimes. I've, mm -hmm. I've heard um, a couple couple of your um, routines on that. Uh, in fact, we do have one. If we want to show another clip of you talking about the uh, Obama and uh, his asking for donations. Okay. That, I thought that was. A good you guys getting emails from Barack Obama? Oh yeah. Cool. That means you gave him five bucks at some point. <laughs> and the, the thing, this kind of embarrassing, this kind of embarrassing personal thing. But but I have to admit, I cannot delete an email from the president of the United States without at least giving it a cursory glance, just in the off chance that he's trying to actually reach me personally. <laughs> Like one of these days, I'm just gonna pop it open. It's gonna be like, Keith, we need you for the campaign. <laughs> Heard you got some killer weed jokes. <laughs> put us over with the stoners. They're kind of sore at me right now. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming, but I'm checking for it. I'm checking for it every day. Um, great stuff. That's great. Um, Thanks. So yeah, I mentioned <laughs> earlier you have uh, several CDs out, and uh, we're going to show the covers of those uh, on the screen here. Uh, there's To the Moon, Cats Made of Rabbits, Elf Orgy, and Atheist Christmas. Um, while they're bringing those up, um, what do you think about uh, the, the, what would you call him, uh, the star of the screen these days, uh, Donald Trump? Oh, just what a bizarre <laughs> place in history to get to witness. He's such, he's so great for comedians, but kind on the of. other hand, if he actually gets in, that would be like the opposite of comedy. That would be yeah, I, scary. People always say, you know, oh, well, uh, George Bush wasn't that great for comedians. If Trump gets in, won't it be great for comedians? And it's like, no, when it gets past a certain level, it's not funny, it's frightening. Yeah. And that thing with Trump is I think he got so much free press and he got a pass so much because none of us took him seriously. Exactly. Which turns out was really dangerous not yeah. to. Right. Um, but how could someone that ridiculous, uh, I'm just a caricature, yeah. be serious? Yeah. And, and it's, okay, so one guy could. But millions of others could follow him? I mean, that's the threat. That's the yeah. scary part. And then the fact that Bernie Sanders might actually be on the other side of this yeah I mean huge liberal bias here uh -huh. but no one has represented me more who's ever been considered for president in my lifetime I would agree and what a Lord of the Rings kind of decision yeah, yeah. <laughs> between light and dark yeah yeah I mean this stuff's surreal it is amazing and then you've got things like uh, pharma bro you know the guy that was gonna that, that 300 times the price, oh yeah, right. The three hundred percent price mm -hmm. increase it's for gonna, AIDS drugs, right. mm -hmm. for AIDS drugs even, mm -hmm. not for mm -hmm. athletes' foot or something, but for AIDS, one of yeah. our you know our darlings as far as things we want to to treat to deal with. Yeah. Uh, he was able to buy them out, and because he owned it, he was right. could jack up the price. That was the only drug out there like it. How is that real? How is that not political theater? Of like mm -hmm. you know, he's just the perfect bad guy, and to make it even more surreal. He then buys the only copy of a Wu-Tang album. 
<laughs> if you didn't that. care about the AIDS drugs, <laughs> Wu Tang did this, you know, artsy thing where they were like, "We're going to make an album and only make one copy of it, and sell it to the highest bidder." Well, sure enough, that guy buys it, wow. and now this dude is making diss videos to Wu Tang, and I'm like, "How weird can this story get?" <laughs> we went from the problems with capitalism and pharmaceutical copyrights to. I have the only copy of a Wu Tang album. <laughs> you will do my bidding. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a really weird world right now. It is. Do you, do you expect like I, I keep expecting Trump to come out with a mini me? Something, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, now today you start hearing that that they're forming a militia to protect them at his rallies right, because right. they were the ones that needed to be protected uh -huh, in his yeah, rallies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, aren't his rallies essentially a militia? But I'm like, okay, so you've got the, the fear of foreigners and you've got the, the hatred of a religious slash ethnic group. Right. Now you've got the brown shirts. Mm -hmm. All he's lacking is the little mustache, uh -huh, you yeah. know? Oh, man. His is going to be the hairdo. You can I mean, get he's, some feature. He's already said if he's president, he's going to kick out 11 million people. Right. He's going to have the army at his disposal. What, what does this remind you of, you know? Yeah. Hmm, I mean, it's, it's almost like history's yeah. been here before. Yeah. Um, and even as I'm saying that it's dangerous not to take him seriously, you don't think he could get elected, do you? I mean, it looks like in the, in the general, boy. he gets his it, butt kicked. I know, but you know... It's scary because to me, you know, I've seen this play out before. Like I, I thought the same thing about Bush when he was yeah. first running, and like, this guy's never, a never, never overestimate the intelligence of the American people. Yeah. Is kind of what I think, um, because there, it's just so easy to manipulate. It seems like through the media, to manipulate people, and we've got, you know, we've got a media that's owned by several. Just there's only like what five or six. Uh, huge corporations that own like 95% of the media. Again, so, where it's so light and dark right now though, because even as that's happening, media is becoming more democratized than ever right, because the, we've got Twitter and we've got blogs and we've got, look, we are the media now in so many ways. Look at the way they couldn't ignore Occupy. Look right. at the way they couldn't ignore Bernie. Bernie Sanders. If it wasn't for social media, Bernie Sanders, he, there's he no way no he would be where he is because the the, me the, the established media is trying so hard to diss him. But we're able to not there. publicize yeah. his huge rallies and everything yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And he's so, getting the votes. He's, getting, yeah. he's doing pretty darn good. When he's I'm, still in the race anyway. Which none of us expected. No. Uh, when, I, when I'm trying to be optimistic, I see it as the, the right is so extreme right now because we're seeing their death throes. Mm -hmm. This is the death right, rattle. Right, I've thought of it that way but, too. Yeah. you know, a dying snake also can bite you. I mean, right. that's a dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> what well, I said the other day, it's uh, it's like watching a nuclear test. It's mm -hmm. actually really fascinating and, and kind of beautiful, uh -huh. but you worry you might be standing too close, uh -huh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or that the test might go awry. Right. You don't want to be collateral be carried damage. Carried out somewhere with more with a higher population. Yeah. So it's it's some pretty scary stuff. Um, so what what do you got coming up? You're performing locally anytime soon? or? Yeah. Um, what do I have coming up? I'm performing at McGeorge Law School this week. Wow. I think by the time this airs, I'll have already done it. Oh, okay. I love those gigs. Those strange. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once a semester, I teach a class on stand-up comedy at UC Davis, just a one-day thing, which oh, that's, nice. that's an interesting. Yeah, that must be fun. Very different from what I normally do. Is it the... Is it the same class, same group of kids every time? It's no, like no. an ongoing, so it's no, just a one-off yeah. each time? All right, just to yeah, introduce I think people. Take, they, they have a class in stand-up comedy, okay. and I'm one day of that class. Okay, I see. And then the rest of it is a regular teacher that oh, okay. you know, has dabbled in stand-up comedy. How do you like doing that? That's, that <laughs> I love must be it. interesting. I, but you know, I, I dropped out of high school, and uh -huh. uh, I tested out early. Uh -huh. And I try not to be insecure about it, but sometimes mm -hmm. you have a little chip on your shoulder because right. you didn't go to college. Right. And now I tell people, well, college pays me to go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now you're teaching college students, <laughs> right. so there you go. <laughs> that feels Excellent. nice. If I could get them to make me a professor emeritus or something. Then. Right, right. <laughs> um, anything else coming up this so, uh, anytime soon? Really I excited. know you got the uh, DVD we talked about earlier. Yeah, bad, bad comedy, comedy for, for bad, bad people. people. We're working on editing it right now. It's coming and, out sometime this year. Yeah, that's all you can say and, so and far. And it okay. looks incredible. We got a really good crew for it. The director is a three-time Emmy nominee. Who knew Sacramento had 
uh -huh. <laughs> I know someone with that level of talent working what, here. What uh, is the show? Is it just you performing, or is it? Yeah, I just okay. did. Uh, I did an hour plus an encore. Uh -huh. I did more time than I intended to. I did like an hour fifteen out at the Harris Center for the Arts in Folsom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and packed audience, sold out show. But it was uh, the way you do things on my level. We put so much into the production, but it was get it in one shot or don't get it at all. Right. And so you have one night to film it. Yeah, one one night, one show. Get right. up there and do it right. Don't freeze up. <laughs> That's kind of like us here. We got one one right. shot at this, and better make it good. We're doing Actually, okay. Could we cut and go back and do that? If you could ask me that last question again. Okay. Uh, I forget what the question <laughs> Just was. Just edit now. that out. <laughs> um, anything else coming up anytime this summer or? Um, I'm going to Washington D.C. for the Reason Rally. Reason Rally. Yeah, okay. they're they're actually flying me out for that, and oh, I'm not nice. performing on the main stage. Uh. But the night before, they're doing uh, a big comedy show, and so I get to perform there, and then from there I'll go to New York. Um, so yeah, everybody watching this on Sacramento Cable Access, be sure to come out to Washington D.C. <laughs> right, <laughs> and then to uh, to Brooklyn and Long Island, and that's where you can see me. Uh, just see me on the internet. Like, you don't want to leave your houses. It's dangerous out there. Yeah, there's lots of great YouTube clips out there uh, of Keith doing yeah, his my, thing. My albums are all on Spotify out. as well. His albums are on Spotify, the ones we mentioned earlier. Um, Sorry if being so unprepared. Check those out. I should know what shows I have coming up. I should yeah. have it written. Uh, yeah, you, you really should, Keith. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you go onto his site, you, mentioned, you probably yeah. plug them there, right? I do. Okay, so and I have a calendar there that lists all of them. Name name that site again. The short rockass dot rockass dot r o c k a s s dot n e t. And um, he's on Facebook, so you can look him up there and like him, and then you'll see yeah. his memes show up once in a while. Keith Lowell. Keith Lowell. Jensen. You can find me. Yeah, it's Keith Lowell Jensen. But Keith Lowell, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, okay. everywhere. It's just at Keith Lowell. All right. Well, that I'll sounds make it good. Easy for you. So um, thanks a lot for coming tonight. Cool, Keith. thanks for having me. This was no fun. No problem. Appreciate it. And uh, so thanks again. We'll see you later on Soapbox Sacramento. Thank you very much. Fake plants. <laughs> uh.